Oh, great. You finished your autobiography. Hmm. Wait a minute. You weren't born on a plantation. You didn't escape from here. And you definitely never met Abraham Lincoln. This is just Frederick Douglass's autobiography with his name crossed out and yours written in, isn't it? Sorry, but you're going to have to tell Oprah to pick someone else's memoir. Dear Tim and Moby, we learned about Frederick Douglass in school, but I'd like to know more. From Myron. Sure thing, Myron. Frederick Douglass was one of the most famous American abolitionists of the 19th century. That means he was an opponent of slavery. Douglass was a brilliant speaker, writer, and activist. His words were extra powerful because he'd experienced the horrors of slavery firsthand. Yep, Frederick Douglass was born a slave in Maryland around 1818. He was separated from his mother right after he was born, and he never knew who his father was. He wasn't even allowed to know his own age. As a boy, Douglass suffered from cold and hunger, and he saw friends and family whipped by plantation owners. But he got lucky. Well, as lucky as a slave could get. He was sold to a family in Baltimore that wasn't quite so cruel. The wife even taught Douglas how to read and write, at least until her husband put a stop to it. Back then, it was against the law to teach slaves to read. Slave owners thought that books could give their slaves dangerous ideas about freedom, and in Douglas's case, they were right. Even though he was still a boy, Douglas realized that he could escape from slavery and be free. So he continued his education in secret, planning to flee to the north as soon as he could. Nope, Douglas had to endure years of hardship before he escaped. But in 1838, he disguised himself as a sailor and made it to freedom. He and his wife settled in Massachusetts, where they met a man named William Lloyd Garrison. Garrison was one of the leading abolitionists of the day, and he published a popular anti-slavery newspaper. In 1843, Garrison invited Douglas to speak at an abolitionist meeting. Douglas decided to give it a go. He amazed the crowd with a passionate retelling of his life story. It was such a success that Douglas began lecturing throughout the free parts of the United States. He even traveled abroad and spoke to packed houses in Britain and Ireland. Two years later, he published his first book, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, which is today considered a literary classic. Yeah, I know you've read it. You copied out the whole thing. Anyway, the book became a bestseller in both America and Europe. The first-person prose gave readers a direct experience of Douglas' story. Many had never before considered America's slaves as human beings capable of suffering. Overnight, Douglas became a leading abolitionist spokesman. He began his own anti-slavery newspaper, The North Star. He also supported the brand-new women's rights movement and Ireland's right to be free of British rule. That's right, Douglas was friends with Abraham Lincoln. During the Civil War, Douglas called for African-American troops to be admitted to the all-white Union Army. When they finally were, he and his sons helped recruit soldiers for the first all-black regiment since the Revolutionary War. But Douglas got angry when he found out they were paid less than whites. So in 1863, he told Lincoln about it personally. It was the first time an African-American met with the president at the White House. The two remained in touch for the rest of Lincoln's presidency. Well, after the Civil War, Douglas continued to lecture, write, and publish newspapers. He also held a bunch of official government positions like Marshal of Washington, D.C. and Consul General to the country of Haiti. Well, no, he died in 1895, so I guess he couldn't sue you for copying his book. But you still shouldn't do it. I mean, plagiarism is wrong. Oh, boy. Man, they'll publish anything these days.